Happy Monday. How you doing? Today's blessing day. And I want to answer a question for you. Is Joseph Prince right about what he said about curses? He made a major statement about curses. Is he right? Let's take a look at it. But today's blessing day. And I want to start off by blessing our country. Our country needs to be blessed. And the priest has the authority given by God to bless the nation. And so I do. And I say to the United States of America, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Now, today being blessing day, this is a day everybody calls for the blessing and to have the blessing spoken over. You should have it spoken over to you on a regular basis. The people in our church have it spoken over them on Wednesday and on Sunday. Some of them come on Wednesday, some of them come on Sunday. And so between those two days, we get everybody blessed. Glory to God. And I mean blessed. Isaac said, talking about Jacob, he said, I have blessed him and he shall be blessed. And that's the way it is. Once I speak that blessing over you folks, I got news for you. You are blessed for the rest of your life. Now all we have to do is make it manifest. And it will. Some of you, it's been manifest. I mean, some of you people are living in million dollar homes. That blessing, it's manifested all right. Incredibly blessed. Businesses have increased incredibly. Huh? That's the blessing. I want it to bless, I want it to manifest in everybody's life. So call me today. Make sure you call me if you did your offerings and donations over the weekend or if you do them today. A lot of people do their offerings uh, on Monday and that way we can uh, get you blessed at the same time. But Friday is offering day, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. People do them all week long. But make sure you call when you do your offerings and your donations. That's how Abraham did it. He was blessed and then he did his tithe to the person who blessed him. Huge connection between the blessing and the tithe. Amen. I even wrote a book about it. And that was actually one of the first books I wrote. Years and years ago, I wrote it. And then I redid it and we published it. So praise God. Joseph Prince made a statement. I'm going to read his statement to you, word for word. His statement, he said, As a Christian or a believer, curses no longer have a right to operate in your life. As a Christian or a believer, curses no longer have a right to operate in your life. Well, he's right about one thing. Curses are subject to spiritual laws. And so are evil spirits. Evil spirits are subject to spiritual laws. Good spirits are subject to spiritual laws too. Everything is subject to a spiritual law. The invisible world is subject to spiritual laws. And curses can only operate if they have a right to operate. But do they have a right to operate in the lives of believers? Well, let me tell you something, folks. I got saved decades ago, filled with the Holy Spirit. Most of you know the story. Three weeks later, God anointed me and gave me three spiritual gifts, the power gifts. He gave me the gift of healing, the gift of miracles and the gift of faith for those gifts. And miracles started to happen. And they happened everywhere I went. And I mean healing miracles. Many of them instant. Eyes open. Brain dead people brought back to life. People full of cancer healed. 
financial miracles, incredible financial miracles. I remember we had a, a little church up in Tomahawk, Wisconsin, our very first church. And these two guys in our church up there were broke, no money at all. And they could not find a job anywhere. And so I prayed over them during church. That week, both of them got jobs making over a hundred bucks a day. They were thrilled. They were thrilled. These two guys found, a, found jobs, separate jobs. And we realized, hey, God will do financial. And they came back and they, they were yelling and screaming and jumping up and down the following Sunday that they had gotten a miracle, both of them. Well, they had. God had done a miracle for them, gotten the, those jobs. Out there in the, in the small town where they lived, where it was hard to find work, they got jobs. When God gets involved, your circumstances don't make any don't don't make any difference to him. Amen. But the question is, can can Christians do curses have a right to operate in the life of a Christian? Well, a curse cannot operate unless it has a spiritual right to do so. After I got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and miracles were going on, I had been cursed by my father a couple different ways. Number one, I had I was smoking a little bit. Smoking. I didn't like smoking. I didn't want to smoke. But I couldn't quit. One day, I was listening to a Joseph or a, a Derek Prince tape. And he was talking about curses. And the Lord showed me a vision, took me back in time and showed me a vision. Now, I don't think it was not an out-of-body experience or anything. It was just he showed me a vision of my dad cursing me because I, I told my dad, I said, I'm going to quit smoking. And he looked at me and he said, you will smoke till the day you die. I couldn't quit. He showed me that. Well, I saw that vision of him doing that. Just as, Now, he had been dead for several years. I stood up, walked out onto the middle of the floor in my office. I was by myself. I said, in the name of Jesus, I break that curse that my dad spoke over me about smoking. Went back to my desk and lit up a cigarette. But two weeks later, the desire to smoke was gone, and I just stopped smoking. Haven't smoked since. Decades, decades, decades. I wouldn't smoke a cigarette for $1,000. I don't even like to be around it. I don't like it when somebody smokes outside. I don't fuss at them, but I don't like it. No desire. That curse. Now, I was a Christian. Did I have a curse? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a curse, all right. Another time. I had been broke all my life. Now, I got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. But let me tell you something, folks. My finances did not change. My finance, I still broke. Still broke. All those years, broke, 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 broke. Struggling to pay our bills. One night, I got a revelation. And the Lord showed me another vision. Isn't God good? He showed me a vision of my grandfather cursing my father's finances. And in that vision, my grandfather told my dad, 
He said, if you leave California and go back to Pennsylvania, you'll never amount to anything. Now, it wasn't as plain a vision as it was about the smoking, but it was something that just dropped, a, kind of like a vision, dropped into my spirit, and I knew that that's what had happened. I went outside at midnight, and I said, in the name of Jesus, I break that curse of poverty that is over me that came from my grandfather to my dad to me. And I felt like somebody reached down and pulled a heavy, wet blanket off of me. I could feel it slowly come up off me. And I went, woo, woo. I mean, it's like if, if somebody wets a blanket and throws it over you and you walk around with that blanket on for a week, you're going to feel a little different when it comes off. Well, I did. I felt it come off me. And my finances started to change. And now, I live in abundance. I've been broke all my life. I grew up poor. I grew up probably poorer than any of you did. I lived in a tiny little house with my mother and brother. Almost no money. Very little money. And in those days, there was no assistance. There was no help. No bathroom. No TV. No phone. Just a little fireplace. We had to close off the other rooms. And the whole house was only like six or seven, it's about 600 square feet. And we had to close off all but one little room. And we huddled in that room by the fireplace in the wintertime. Because it would be 30 below. That's how I grew up. That's how I lived. I lived that way all through high school. Huh? The other kid, the only place I ever took a shower was in the, it was was in school in the gym. When I took gym class, that's the only time I ever got to take a shower. You know, otherwise we took baths in the sink. That's how I grew up. Don't talk to me about being poor. I know all about it, and it stayed with me. I was broke. All my life, I was born. and well educated, smart. You know, oh my goodness, answer the questions on Jeopardy, but broke. Smart has nothing to do with finances, folks, but curses do. When I broke that curse, and I was cursed after I got saved. Read Deuteronomy twenty-eight. All that is full of. This is the curse. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68 is the curse. Anybody who is sick continually or anybody who is broke and have financial problems continually has got curses operating in their life. And it doesn't matter if you're saved or not. Joseph Prince is absolutely wrong. He's wrong about that. Curses do operate in the lives of Christians. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law but it has sure got back in there, I'll tell you. And it is operating in the lives of people. They're sick and broke. I can go into any church and I say, how many people in here need healing? Half, Three-fourths of the church. How many people in here need financial increase? The rest of them all stand up. I Believe me, I know. Mary and I did conferences in churches all over the country. We've been all over the country in churches doing conferences. And I always said, who, who needs financial increase in this church? Who needs to be blessed in this church? And everybody stands up because they're broke. Christians should not be broke. Losing their house, losing their car, not being able to pay their bills. That's a curse. I break curses. That's what I do. And when I do that, lives change. I not only break curses, but I speak the blessing. I don't know why every preacher isn't doing that because they don't know enough to, including Joseph Prince. He should be doing that for his church. You call me today. Tell everybody you know who is sick and broke, call Pastor Jim. Nobody, I mean nobody in this entire country should be sick or broke as long as I'm here because I'm available. I can get you healed and I can get your finances turned around by breaking curses.